cloud has become the top operating model for most companies, especially during the pandemic. What does cloud mean for a company's bottom line? And are there nuances driving these cloud decisions? To discuss this and more, I'm super excited here to, to have with me Martin Casado, my good friend. Uh, Martin is a general partner at uh, the venture capital firm of Andreessen Horowitz. But I've known Martin since his days as a PhD student at Stanford, where he pioneered software-defined networking and created one of the first companies of that era, NYSERA. And we worked together for a bit at VMware as well. So welcome, Martin, and great to have you with us today. What are these trends that you're seeing when it comes to use of cloud? Yeah, I think it's important for everyone to remember that we're still actually in the early days of cloud. Um, so, you know, depending on who you ask, the cloud market is what, $300 billion a year right now. Um, most estimates suggest it's growing 20% uh, year on year, and that will go for the next, you know, almost decade, right? And so if you compare that to the $3 trillion IT industry, it's a very large market, but it's still early. And with that, with that is we're still just starting to understand the implications of cloud. Like we know the benefits, we know like agility, we know, you know, we know the benefits, but we're just starting to understand the actually the economic implications. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it turns out for some companies, actually, this is fairly significant. And so we're entering an era now, and I would view this as almost like cloud V2 understanding where, you know, there's a lot of discussion around like, what is the right architecture for cloud? What is the right cost model for cloud? How should I use cloud in the correct ways? And so I think this is kind of where we are in the cloud adoption cycle. I agree, Martin. So to your point, I mean, we've seen lots of companies taking on public cloud initiatives. And when we talk to IT leaders, they talk about scale, agility, uh, and the speed of development and being able to bring out new applications quickly. All that is not a surprise. Uh, I think there's perhaps a little bit less of an understanding of the true cost of cloud. Now, you've had a front seat uh, uh, position here uh, as you sit on the boards and you've invested in a number of these born in the cloud companies, uh, software companies and SaaS companies that really started doing everything in the public cloud. Uh, you published a, a fairly controversial paper here uh, around uh, the true cost of cloud here and, uh, and also talked about it as a bit of a paradox. And uh, I think you call it a trillion dollar paradox, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, yeah. so what were the key findings? Yeah, sure. So, so like, like you said, I sit on a board of these companies. I've seen, um, uh, you know, you sit there in these board meetings, you're like, wow, you know, like 50% of our COGS, 70% of our COGS, 80% of our COGS are cloud. What's going on? So to understand this, we looked at 50 public companies, the majority of which, the vast majority of which I PO'd in the last six years. And, and we spelunked through S1s and we asked the question, what percentage of COGS is cloud? Mm -hmm. um, these are software companies, right? Uh, and it turned out that it was 50%, which is just an enormous number, right? And then we asked the question, like, listen, if 50% of the COGS is cloud, if you reduce that by a factor of two, which is totally doable in many cases, um, uh, you know, how will that impact the, the, the share price of these companies. And across the 50 companies that we talked to, we estimate between 100 to $200 billion <laughs> would be, Massive. you know, is being suppressed, which is like, you know, I mean, this is like, this is $200 billion across 50 companies. And by the way, the trillion dollar paradox um, is that, you know, if you extend this, we were just looking at 50 companies, if you extend this industry wide, it's very easy to come up with 500 billion to a trillion dollars. And so, listen, we're just starting to have companies that IPO that are heavily reliant on the cloud. We're just starting to understand the economics. And the result is, is that, you know, it makes up a large portion of COGS and that greatly, greatly suppresses the, uh, the, the share price, um, uh, you know, if, uh, unless you're able to drop it. So are you suggesting, Martin, that these born in the cloud companies actually repatriate workloads on-prem? So, so uh, you know, it's interesting is when we started the work uh, for the paper, the research for the paper, the goal was just to do a cost analysis. We didn't even <laughs> we didn't even want to come up with suggestions of what we do. We're like, listen, how much, you know, how much of uh, a company's economics are driven by the cloud? In these conversations, and we really talked to dozens, um, many companies we spoke to says that they've either repatriated or repatriation. Um, and so, you know, we don't take a position on this. 
However, uh, it is being done today and it is being considered today. And clearly there are cost advantages if you do it right. And so um, in the large continuum of solutions, whether it's you know, optimize better or um, you know, buy a third party tool for visibility or push it. You know, so your engineers think about cost or repatriation. We think it is something that uh, you know, customers should have in the conversation. It should be part of the conversation. So we've got about 20,000 plus enterprise customers uh, who are starting the journey in a different way, right? They all started with on-prem data centers and almost everybody there is looking to use the public cloud. What advice would you have for these companies uh, as they go to the cloud? And what should they be looking out and learn from the lessons of all your SaaS companies? So, yeah, so, so this is fairly obvious, but it just, it's so important it bears repeating, which is optionality is critically important. Um, and the right way to do that is uh, upfront is multi-cloud. Uh, and it just seems to be already a reality. I mean, HashiCorp just uh, you know, did a survey which showed that 76% of companies are, are already multi-cloud. Bank of America had a CI report that basically said the same thing recently. And so it's just important to realize that you know, just like all companies are becoming software companies, it feels like all software companies are becoming SaaS companies. And if you're building a SaaS service, which is really the primary mechanism of distributing software, the cloud becomes part of your cogs. And the, the primary way to rein that in um, is by having optionality on the back end. And listen, this is why I think like Nutanix is so trend aligned. I mean, the world is coming your way, which is cloud is not a, a location. It's not a company. Cloud is an operating model. And that operating model is something that you can consume as on-prem equipment. You can consume it in a colo or you consume it as you know, a service over the public internet. The important thing is that you have optionality in how you consume it. So Martin, I think what you just said outlines exactly our vision, right? We, I agree with you 100%. Cloud is an operating model. Our customers are going to operate in this multi-cloud world. And I think there's an opportunity for them to do cloud right as they move forward and learn from the lessons of all these companies uh, that, you, that have been in the cloud. So wonderful having you with us, Martin. Uh, thank you so much and all the best. Awesome, thank you.